think about the cancer and cigarette situation, and that is the same type of situation we are faced with right now, where there are people who are prepared, especially the oil industry, to say it is not happening because they are looking at the bottom line where they are concerned. So I would like to advise all of us to bear that in mind. Dr. Trotz, would you? Yeah. Shown that over the last few years, temperature has been steadily rising right throughout the Caribbean. We're seeing our seawater temperatures, sea surface temperatures, warmer than before. And this is why we see so many episodes of bleaching in the region. We're seeing the intensity of our hurricanes. Last year was a particularly bad year. And basically, that points to warming of the Caribbean Sea. So there's much more energy for the hurricanes to pick up when they come into the region. And they're transitioning from a tropical storm to Category 3, Category 4 hurricanes in a very short time. Wilma entered the Caribbean as a tropical storm, and 24 hours later, it was a Category 4 hurricane. So these are, these are basically bits of evidence that we are now pretty firm about. There's no question. I know, you know, people might say in Belize and in Miami, there have been several cold spells over the last few months, but the trend is there. We are living in a warmer world, a warmer Caribbean, and the modeling that we've been doing for the Caribbean, looking at projections for future climate, the, what is coming out from those models that we're going to be living in a drier Caribbean in future, which means less water, uh, but also a warmer Caribbean. So warmer, drier conditions are on the table. Okay, yes, and you could tell that I ran outside, right? Okay, yes, um, there we heard um, Dr. Kendrick Lester talking about global warming versus global cooling, and also we heard Dr. Trotz, um, yeah. Steffi, talking about the, the same subject. Uh, our next speaker um, at the conference was Minister Rene Montero, who is the Minister of Agriculture and Fisheries, and you know, um, these conservation areas yeah. fall under the, the Ministry of Fisheries, mm -hmm. the Agriculture and Fisheries. So yeah, we were uh, very happy to have him on board. Yeah. This was very important for us. Yes. Yeah. And it was good that you, he, he accepted to, yeah, yeah. to come as well. All right. Uh, so let's hear what Minister Rene Montero has to say about government's um, policy of views on environment and climate change. I must say that um, as Minister of, Agricul of Agriculture, Fisheries and Cooperative, and especially being responsible for the Fisheries Department, it has been a very challenging one. But um, I must say that um, a lot has been accomplished, but um, all of that is because um, I have good technical people working along with me. And um, whatever we, we do is we consult. We consult with the fishermen, we consult with them. Um, the NGOs and we consult with the with the um, all the stakeholders before we implement any new legislation. Since I took over, a lot has been done in terms of um, conservation and, and protection. For example, in in the Holchan, the Holchan area has been extended to include the um, Cangrejo up to Cangrejo Key, and um, a lot of fishes have been put on the endangered species, and some have been. Um, protected, for example, the, the parrot fish has been put on the endangered list, and the five um, scavenger fish that um, clean that are responsible for cleaning the the reef. Also, we have the um, NASA grouper, which is now um, fished only um, seasonal, and um, we also ex ex extended the protected areas in the area of um, the Sapadilla Keys, including all that flat up to the in Placencia Peninsula. Um, I must say that um, my government is keen in protecting the marine resources because um, we figure that it is important for the future generations and I know that um, a lot have been happening 
And if we do not um, legislate, if we do not um, listen to the conservationists, if we don't listen to the people, to the people involved in it, that um, pretty soon our natural resources will probably be depleted. We intend to, to move in the area of um, banding um, trawler fishing. We intend to, to um, look at the, more closely at net fishing and um, not only ban it, but um, study it and do it in a responsible way because we know that the, the fishermen need to earn a living from the, from the sea. So whatever we do, it has to be responsible, it has to be sustainable, and it has to be consulted with all the stakeholders. My job as a Minister of um, Fisheries is to listen to listen to the people involved in, in the marine um, biology, to listen to the stakeholders in, in, in fisheries and in all um, what is happening in the sea. And um, to me, I think it has been a very challenging one, and uh, I enjoy it. And I enjoy working with the conservationists, and I, and I intend to work more closely with them and to legislate as it is needed, but in a responsible way and in a sustainable way. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much for this precious time that I am being allowed. And definitely I must reiterate that we are working very closely, the, the minister responsible for fisheries and agriculture together with my ministry. Since in, in particularly because of my background in the fishing industry, I have been in the fishing industry for practically most of my life. Uh, in particularly with the fishing cooperatives and that is something that is very important since our fishermen then are organized and whenever you have people organized it is easier to deal with problems that exist but he's right that in our administration definitely believes in consultation it is very very important to have the NGOs or the technical people working together with the users or stakeholders of the industry. I can recall uh, being a member of the Fisheries Advisory Board at the time that uh, we always had that situation whereby the technical people will feel that whatever they believe is what should be done. And I saw that confrontation between the users and the technical people. I am very proud today that uh, at least 90% uh, of that is, is the other way now, that the technical people are really depending on the users for information to be able to apply it and legislate at a later time. And I feel that that is the way that we have to, to, to live. In my ministry as a Minister of Tourism, again, I feel that fisheries, climate change and, and tourism have to work hand in hand. There is no way how we can separate one another. And not only in, in climate changes, even in, in the activities that are done, uh, I've always advised the, the fishermen that even though we have a more lucrative industry in, in the tourism industry, they should not forget their roots. As Rene is saying, uh, culture is something that we have to preserve. And what hard work had been done by our forefathers in particularly into trying to make sure that we are well organized and so we're supposed to maintain it. The younger generation today seem to uh, believe that everything was there ever since. But no, it was a lot of sacrifice on the part of the older folks that uh, what we are reaping today was an effort uh, of our forefathers. And I feel that it is our responsibility, our duty, in particular now being in government, to make sure that we can legislate and make the proper adjustment to make sure that we have a better future for generations to come. And then I can recall just a few weeks ago when the people from UNESCO were here speaking about the damages that had been done to a number of our keys where mangroves have been cut, where the marine life uh, has been destroyed and then ask the question, what will our administration do different uh, now that we are in government?